All right, uh, welcome everyone to uh, Calculus 1. Uh, this is the first course in the sequence of four calculus courses. Uh, in this course, we'll be using this uh, particular textbook, Calculus by Laura Talman and Peter Korn. And uh, we will be going over the first three chapters uh, in this course, Calculus 1. And uh, we are going to start with uh, chapter one. Uh, chapter one is about uh, limits. We are going to uh, learn uh, basic concepts uh, about limits in chapter one. All right, uh, let's get started with uh, section 1.1. This section 1.1 is about an intuitive introduction to limits, okay? Uh, basically in this section, we are trying to understand the limit concepts geometrically. Geometrically, what do you mean by uh, a limit, okay? All right, so here, first we have this uh, definition, uh, definition 1.1, it has uh, four parts. Uh, let's try to uh, go over one by one. First definition is the definition of limit, and next limit at infinity. Uh, the third one is infinite limit, and the last one is uh, what is infinite limit at infinity, okay? Let's go over one by one. So let me copy this uh, definition to the other slide. What do you mean by limit, okay? This is the formal statement of limit. If the values of a function f of x approaches L as x approaches to C, then we say that L is the limit of f of x as x approaches to C, and we write this limit statement. This means limit as x approaches to C, f of x is equal to L, okay? What do you mean by that? Okay, this is just an statement. Uh, what do you mean by this limit statement? Well, let's take an example. Suppose you have a, you have been given a graph of a function like this. This is your x-axis. This is y is equal to f of x. Suppose your graph looks like this. This is the graph of the function f of x, okay? And let's say this point is c on the x-axis and corresponding function value or the y value, okay? Y value, functions, function value, they are the same, okay? Let's say the corresponding y value is L, okay? Then let's observe a few things here. What happens to your function value as x approaches to C from the right-hand side, okay? Let's explore. If your x value is somewhere here, somewhere here, your y value would be here. Here's, here is your y value. If your x value is a little bit closer to C, I'm coming towards the C from the right-hand side, okay? Then your y value would be somewhere here. As you can see, this y value is more closer to L than this y value, right? And if I come even closer to C from the right-hand side, if I take a x value somewhere here, then your y value is even closer to L. As you can see, when these x values are approaching to C from the right-hand side, your y values are approaching to L, right? And a similar scenario can be observed even if you approach to C from the left-hand side. Think about this. If your x value is here, here is your y value, right here. And if you go a little bit closer to C from the left-hand side, then your new y value would be here. As you can see, it is closer to L, right? And if you go even closer to C, then your new y value would be right here. It is getting and getting closer and closer to L. As you can see, as x approaches to C from the left-hand side, your y value is still approaching to L. That means as x approaches to C from either side, your y value is approaching to L. In that case, we write this limit statement, limit, as x approaches to C, f of x is equal to L, meaning that as x approaches to C, your y value is approaching to L, okay? Sometimes this is called the two-sided limit. Why do we say that this is the two-sided limit? Because as x, x approaches to C from either sides, your y value is approaching the same value L, okay? And then you might be asking the question, do we have one-sided limit? Yes, we are, we are going to talk about one-sided one sided limits in a second, okay? Notice that in this definition, 
you don't need to have your function defined at x is equal to c to talk about the limit at x is equal to t x is equal to c pardon me so for example think about this example suppose this is your x axis this is your y axis you are given another function f of x i'll use the same f of x uh, notation here and oops suppose you have a hole at the point say x is equal to 2 let's say this y value is 5 okay now this is the graph of y is equal to f of x as you can see now in this case at x is equal to 2 my function is not even defined i have a hole there still i can talk about the limit as you can see in this case clearly the limit limit as x goes to 2, f of x is equal to 5. Why is it true? Because as x approaches to c from the right hand side, your y values are getting closer and closer to this value, right? For example, if your x value is here, your y value would be this one. And if your x value is here, your y value would be this one. And if your x value is very close to 2, your y value is getting very close to 5, right? So as you can see, the limit as x approaches to 2 from the right hand side, f of x is 5. And also as x approaches to 2 from the left hand side, then also you can see that the clearly the limit is uh, 5. So this limit statement is true. As x, ap x approaches to 2 from either sides, f of x is 5. Okay, this is an example where your function is not even defined, but still the limit exists. Okay. All right, let, all right, let's look at uh, our next uh, definition, limit at infinity, okay? What do you mean by limit at infinity? Here is the formal statement. If the values of a function f of x approach L as x grows without bound, then we say that L is the limit of f of x as x approaches to infinity, and we write this limit statement, okay? Again, let's try to understand this through geometry, okay? Suppose you are given a function like this. Uh, here is your y-axis or the f of x. And here is your x-axis. And this time you are given a function like this. Say this value is L, okay? In red, this is the graph of f of x, okay? I will write y is equal to f of x. It's given to you. The graph is given to you. Now, for this graph, would this limit statement be true? That's what we are going to investigate. Well, what does this tell you? As x approaches to infinity, f of x. f of x is the y value, right? Remember, f of x is the y value. Your y value would be L. Is that true when you look at this graph? Okay, let's explore. As you can see, when x grows without bound, that means as x goes to infinity, your y value your y values are getting closer and closer to L, right? See, all these y values are getting closer and closer to L. That means as x grows without bound, your y values are approaching to L, okay? This is an example uh, where you can write this limit statement. As x approaches to infinity, the value of f of x is L, okay? All right, let's... Look at uh, the next definition. Infinite limit, okay? So here is the formal statement. If the values of a function f of x grows, grow without bound as x approaches to c, then we say that infinity is the limit of f of x as x approaches to c, and we write this limit statement, okay? That means limit as x approaches to c, f of x is equal to infinity. Okay, again, let's look at an example. Let's try to understand this geometrically. Okay, let's say this is your y-axis, this is your x-axis, and here is your c. Here is where you have your value c. And think of a graph of a function like this. 
in blue. This is the graph of the function f of x, okay? y is equal to f of x. Let's try to observe a few things here. Now, as you can see, as x approaches to c from the left hand side, your y values are growing without bound, right? As you can see, this, your y values are getting large and large. Let me put an arrow here to indicate that your graph will be going up forever. As you can see, as x approaches to c, your y values are growing without bound. Also, as x approaches to c from the right hand side, your y values are growing without bound. Okay, in that case, we write limit as x approaches to c, f of x is equal to infinity. Infinity is just a symbol, okay? It's not a real number. It's, it's a hypothetical thing to uh, uh, indicate that it is uh, growing without bound, okay? All right, the next definition. Infinite limit at infinity, okay? What do you mean by infinite limit at infinity? Here is the statement. If the values of a function f of x grow without bound as x grows without bound, then we say that infinity is the limit of f of x as x approaches to infinity. And we write this limit statement. Limit as x approaches to infinity, f of x is equal to infinity, okay? Here is an example again. This is your y-axis. This is your x-axis. Think of an example like this. Here is the graph of f of x, okay? I put an arrow here to indicate that this continues forever, okay? It's going up forever. Okay, now if you look at this uh, uh, graph, graph of f of x, what can you observe? Y is equal to f of x. You can see that as x grows without bound, your y values are also growing without bound, right? For example, if your x value is here, your y value is this much, okay? If your x value is uh, here, your y value would be here. And if you pick an x value far away, your y value would be very high, right? Likewise, as x approaches to infinity, your y values are approaching to infinity, okay? That's when you write this limit statement. Limit as x approaches to infinity, f of x, or your y approaches to infinity, meaning that it grows without bound, okay? All right, next we have the definition of one-sided limits. What do you mean by one-sided limit? Here is the limit uh, definition for the left-hand limit. We have two definitions, left-hand limit and the right-hand limit. Let's see what the left-hand limit definition says. If the values of a function f of x approach a value l as x approaches to c from the left, we say that l is the left hand limit of f of x as x approaches to c and we write limit as x approaches to c from the left hand side. That's why you put a small minus sign here to indicate that x approaches to c from the left hand side. Okay, you put a minus sign here if x approaches to c from the left hand side and you put a plus sign there if x approaches to c from the right hand side. Okay, so this is the limit statement limit x approaches to uh, c from the left hand side f of x is equal to it. What does this mean? Well, before, understand, before we understand what that means, let's have a look at the definition of the right limit uh, before we go to an example, okay? Here's the definition of right limit, right hand limit. Uh, if the values of a function f of x approach value r as x approaches c from the right, we say that r is the right-hand limit of f of x as x approaches c, and we write this limit statement, okay? This is called the right-hand limit. Limit as x approaches to c from the positive side. That means from the right-hand side, okay? To indicate that x approaches to c from the right-hand side, you put a plus sign here, okay? f of x is equal to r, okay? So let's try to understand this. We are an example. Again, I'm going to take a geometric example. Let's take a, a graph of a function f of x, okay? 
All right. Let me take this particular example. Maybe a little bit lower. This is your uh, y axis, or y is equal to f of x. That's, your, that's the graph we are looking at. This is your x axis. Suppose your graph looks like this. Okay. Say this value is uh, L and this value is R. These are two numbers, okay? L and R are two numbers, just like two and five. Okay, now let's observe a few things here. Now we can talk about one-sided limits in this case. So what is the limit as X goes to C? Oh, by the way, this value, I will take this X value to be C on the X axis, okay? What is the limit as X approaches to C from the left-hand side, F of X? See, I put a minus sign here to indicate that X approaches to C from the left-hand side. That means that your X is approaching to C from this side. What happens to your function value or the Y value as X approaches to C from the left-hand side? Clearly, your Y value is approaching to this particular value, right? This value. So your Y value is approaching to L. This would be L. This is L in this case. What about the other limit? Limit as X approaches to C from the right-hand side. I put a plus sign here to indicate that X approaches to C from the right-hand side, F of X. What is that limit? Well, as X approaches to C from the right-hand side, your Y value is approaching to this particular value this time, R it's not approaching the L, the value L, like in the left limit case, okay? It's a, it is approaching a different value this time, okay? As X approaches to C from the right-hand side, your Y value is approaching this particular value. How do you see that? Well, take an X value somewhere here, your Y value would be here. And then you take a closer X value, and then your Y value would be somewhere here. And then if you take an X value somewhere here, your Y value would be somewhere here. And if you take your X value to be very close to C from the right-hand side, your Y value would be here. As you can see, these Y values are approaching to R. So the right limit is R, okay? This is an example where you have one-sided limit. Your left limit is L, your right limit is R. But notice that those two are not equal. According to this example, this value is different from this value, right? Okay, this is an example where you can talk about one-sided limit, but the two-sided limit does not exist. Remember, if you want your two-sided limit to exist, your left limit and the right limit should be equal. That means these two numbers should be equal, but it's not here, okay? All right, that's the idea of left-hand limit and the right-hand limit. Let's move on, and here is, uh, a remark based on what I said in the previous slide, okay? Two, the two-sided limit of f of x as x approaches to c exist if and only if the left limit and the right limit limits as x approaches to c exist and they are equal, okay? If you want your two-sided limit to exist, the left limit and the right limit should exist and they should be equal and vice versa. What do you mean by that? If left limit and the right limit, they, are, they exist, and if they are equal, then the two-sided limit exists. And if the two-sided limit exists, uh, the left limit and the right limit should exist, and they should be equal. All right, the next thing I want to uh, talk about is uh, infinite limits, limits at infinity, and asymptotes, okay? Let's go over this uh, definition 1.3 uh, to understand uh, those concepts. First, in 1.3, we are going to talk about vertical asymptotes. What do you mean by vertical asymptotes? Uh, geometrical. Here is the, the formal statement. A function f has a vertical asymptote at x is equal to c if one or more of the following are true. Okay, if one of these 
are true, then we say that at x is equal to c, we have a vertical asymptote. Let's go over examples for each situation. We have four situations where you could get vertical asymptotes. Let's look at an example for the first case. First of all, if you let me, let me draw the xy plane for all the cases. This is your x, this is y is equal to f of x. I will omit y is equal to f of x in the remaining graphs, okay? We have y is equal to f of x on the y-axis. Here is your x-axis, this is your y is equal to f of x. Okay, suppose in the first case, let's try to see what kind of a situation we would have in the first case. Notice that the first case says, limit as x approaches to c from the positive side. See, you have a plus sign here. That means x approaches to c from the positive side, f of x is equal to infinity. That means a situation like this. Suppose you have a graph like this. This is your y is equal to f of x in red. As you can see now, as x approaches to c from the positive side, from the right-hand side, as x approaches to c, by the way, this is the value of c, okay? As x approaches to c from the right-hand side, your y values are approaching infinity, right? They grow without bound. So that means this limit statement is true. In that case, we say that this vertical line, what is the equation of this vertical line? That is x is equal to c, right? This vertical line x is equal to c is a vertical asymptote of f of x. Okay. Now let's look at the second situation. Limit as x approaches to c from the left hand side this time, f of x is equal to infinity. Here is an example of a graph to illustrate that. Okay. Again, this value is c. Suppose you have a graph like this. Here is the situation where you get another vertical asymptote. As x approaches to c from the left hand side, your y values are growing without bound. Your y values are getting larger and larger. In that case, also we say that this x is equal to c is a vertical asymptote. This is x is equal to c again. I'll be uh, quicker in the next two uh, cases. Here, the third case is as x approaches to c from the right hand side, f of x is minus infinity. That is a situation like this. This is C again. This time, the graph looks like this. By the way, you should have arrows here, okay? Arrows at these points to indicate that they are going forever, okay? So here is an example where this limit statement is true. Limit as x approaches to C from the right-hand side, your y values are going to negative infinity. It's going down, okay? So this is true. In that case, again, this is a vertical asymptote. X is equal to C is a vertical asymptote. And the last example I want to show you is this one. If we have a situation like this, this is the graph this time. As X approaches to C from the left-hand side, F of X is minus infinity. That means the Y values are going to minus infinity. As X approaches to C, from the left hand side. All right, let's move on to the next definition, uh, horizontal asymptotes. When do we say that we have horizontal asymptotes? Okay, here is the formal statement. A non-constant function f has a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to l if one or both of the following are true. Okay, if one of these limit statements are true, then we say that we have a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to l, okay? What do we mean by this uh, limited statement? Well, let's look at uh, some examples. Again, the geometry is going to help us, okay? Suppose you have a, a function like this. Let's say this is l, okay? This is your function f of x. And I put an arrow to indicate, uh, doesn't look good. I put an arrow like this to indicate that that is getting closer and closer to this horizontal line. Okay. 
Now, as you can see here, as x grows without bound, or in other words, as x goes to infinity, your function value, your f of x values are getting closer and closer to this particular y value, right? L. So in that case, this limit statement is true. And in that case, we say that this horizontal line is a horizontal asymptote. This horizontal line is nothing but y is equal to L. y is equal to L is a horizontal asymptote of this graph, of this graph y is equal to f of x. By the way, the graph is y is equal to f of x, okay? Okay, now let's look at an example where this limit statement is true. Well, that's the flip side, right? This time, limit as x goes to minus infinity, f of x has to be L, a situation like this. Here is your L. This time, your graph is going to, your y values are getting closer and closer to L as x goes to minus infinity. Or in other words, as x grows without bound in the negative direction, okay? This value we say. In that case, the limit statement is limit as x goes to negative infinity, f of x is equal to L. The limit statement for the first case is limit as x approaches to infinity, f of x is equal to L, okay? In either case, we say that this line, this horizontal line y is equal to L is the horizontal asymptote. Here also the line is y is equal to L, okay? That's the horizontal asymptote, all right? H A for the horizontal asymptote, okay? Here also this line Y is equal to L is a horizontal asymptote. Okay, that's the idea of horizontal asymptotes. Next, look at some examples. Uh, I want to go, go a few examples. Here is the uh, first example that I want to uh, go over. Use tables of values to find these two given limits. We need to find the limit as x approaches to one, x plus one, okay? This view this as your f of x. This is your function now, okay? In the second case, this is your function. What do we do to find the limit using tables? Well, what we do is we take some x values which are approaching to one from the left-hand side and some x values which are approaching into one from the right hand side. Look at this table. Here are my x values. Okay. I take some x values which are approaching to one. As you can see, these x values are getting closer and closer to one, right? 0 0.9, 0 0.99, 0 0.999. They are approaching to one, right? Similarly, I take some x values which are approaching to one from the right hand side this time. Right hand side means those values should be bigger than one, right? See, this is 1.1 and then 1.01, which is closer to one, and 1.001, which is even closer to one from the right hand side, right? So now I am interested in knowing what happens to my function value, the function value x plus one, as x approaches to one from the left hand side and as x approaches to one from the right hand side. Well, all I have to do is I have to compute the y value, right? I plug in this x value in my function and find the corresponding y value, okay? So likewise, I have found the y value. As you can see, this is 1.99, one, pardon me, this is 1.9, this is 1.99, this is 1.999. As you can see, they are approaching to something, right? Looks like they are approaching to two. I can fairly assume that they are approaching to two. Even from the right-hand side, these y values are approaching to two. This is 2.1, this is 2.01, which is close to two. And this is 2.001, which is even close to two, uh, even close to one, two, pardon me, two. Okay, so that means I can write a fair statement, which says that limit as x approaches to one, x plus one is equal to two because as you can see from the table, as x approaches to one from either sides, your y value is approaching to the same number two. These y values are approaching the same number two. Okay, this is the uh, placeholder for two. 
Okay, now we have that limit. By the way, this is not a proof, okay? This is an observation-based statement. Okay, now let's uh, try to compute the other limit using the table, limit as x goes to infinity, x over x minus one. Same idea. This time, I'm taking some growing x values, 25, 50, 100, 1000, 100, 10,000, and if you want, you can take more higher and higher values. And I compute my y value. Y value means I plug in this x value in my function. My function is x over x plus one. Okay, so if I compute those y values, these are the y values I get. As you can see, this is 1.04 roughly, this is 1.02 roughly, 1.01, 1.001, and 1.0001, and hopefully next one would be 1.0001 if you take a bigger x value. Looks like these y values are approaching to one, right? That's what we observe here. Based on that, we can conclude that the limit. I don't know where am I supposed to write here, but anyway, let x goes as x goes to infinity, x over x minus one is equal to one. We can make a fair limit statement like this because that's what we observe using this table. Okay. Again, this is not a proof. Actually, we will we can prove this one in the later sections, but for now we are trying to understand the limit using tables like this. This is also true, by the way. We can prove that it is true. We'll be proving that uh, these are true later, but here we are just trying to understand using tables. Okay, let's look at uh, the second example. Determine the limits as limits at any holes, corners, or asymptotes on the graphs of the functions. We have three parts. Let's try to find the limits at uh, uh, these points, okay? Here we have a uh, hole, here also we have a hole, and here we have a sharp cone, okay? So this is not really a hole because your function is defined here, but let's try to find the limit at this point, at this point, and at this point, okay? So this is the first example, first part of the example. Okay, so how do you find the limit of the function f of x? The graph of f of x is given to us. How do you find the limit of the function at x is equal to minus two? This is minus two. Well, what you do is you find the left limit and the right limit. Limit as x approaches to minus two from the left-hand side. I put this minus sign in top to indicate that x approaches to c from the left-hand side, f of x, is equal to, it is clearly equal to two, right? As x approaches to two from the left-hand side, your y value is approaching to this value, right? Two, so that limit is two, the left limit is two. Similarly, we find the right limit. Limit as x approaches to two minus two from the right-hand side, f of x is equal to, what happens to the limit of the function as x approaches to minus two from the right-hand side. Again, your y value is approaching to this particular value right here, which is two. See, your function value is not here, but your y value is approaching to this value, this value two, okay? So this is two. So that means your left limit and the right limit, they are equal. So that means the two-sided limit exists. So limit, x goes to minus two, f of x is equal to two. If the left limit and the right limit exist, and if they are equal, then the two-sided limit exists. Okay, two-sided limit means without sign here. You don't put a sign here. As x approaches to see, uh, minus two from both sides, from either side, your function value approaches to two-sided limit exists in this case. All right, next, let's focus on this point. What is the limit at x is equal to minus one? Again, clearly limit as x approaches to minus one from the left-hand side, f of x is equal to three. As x approaches to c from the left-hand side, your y value is approaching this particular y value, okay? So the limit is three. And limit as x approaches to minus one from the right-hand side, again, limit is going to be three. That means the two-sided limit exists. 
as x approaches to minus one, f of x is equal to three. The two-sided limit exists. Here also the two-sided limit exists. Okay, the last one. Let's try to find the limit at x is equal to three. Limit x goes to three from the left-hand side, f of x. What is that limit? As x approaches to three from the left-hand side, your y value is approaching to this particular y value, right? Minus two. Okay, again, recall that. How do you, how do you see that from the geometry? If your x value is here, your y value is here. If your x value is here, your y value is here. And if your x value is even closer to three from the le left-hand side, your y value would be even closer to minus two. That means as x approaches to three from the left-hand side, your y value is approaching to minus two. So the left limit is minus two. Similarly, you can see that the right limit as x approaches to three from the right-hand side, f of x is again, minus two. So that means your left limit is minus two at x is equal to three, and your right limit is also minus two. That means the two-sided limit exists because the one-sided limits exist and they are equal. So we can write this two-sided limit statement. Limit as x goes to three, f of x is equal to minus two. All right, next part. Find the limit here. Here is the only corner point. You have only one corner point at x is equal to uh, two and all the other, on all the other points, you have some nice smooth uh, graph. So let's try to find the limit at x is equal to two. Again, you find the left limit and the right limit. Limit as x goes to two from the left-hand side, f of x, what is that? Pardon me, here it is uh, not f of x, it's g of x. This time my function is g of x, okay? Let's put g of x here. g of x, what is this limit? As x approaches to two from the left-hand side, that means x approaches to two from the left-hand side, your y value is approaching to this particular y value, three. Okay, so the left limit is three. What is the right limit? Limit as x approaches to two from the right-hand side, g of x, what is that going to be? Here, this time, x approaches to two from the right-hand side. When x approaches to two from the right-hand side, your function values or your y values are approaching to this particular value, which is minus three. Now, this time, as you can see, your left limit is plus three, your right limit is minus three, and they are not equal. So that means the two-sided limit does not exist in this case, okay? Two-sided limit does not exist. I'll write DNE for does not exist, okay? Let's get familiar with this notation. Okay, let's go to the next example. Uh, how do you find the limit here? Here we have a vertical asymptote. We need to find the limit at x is equal to minus two. Let's find it. Limit as x approaches to minus two from the left-hand side, h of x. What is that limit? As x approaches to two from the left-hand side, like this, as you can see, your y values are growing without bound, right? As x approaches to see the minus two from the left-hand side, your y values are growing without bound. That means your y value goes to infinity. So it is plus infinity. What about the right limit? Limit as x approaches to minus two from the right-hand side, h of x. What is this limit? As x approaches to minus two from the right-hand side, as you can see, your y values are going to minus infinity. Your y values are growing in the negative direction without bound, okay? So that means this limit should be minus infinity, okay? How do you justify that again? 
make an argument like this. You ex, if your x value is here, your y value is here. This is your y value. If your x value is a little bit closer to minus two, your y value is very largely negative. And if you are very close to minus two, your y value would be very large negative number. As you can see, your y values are uh, going to infinity. Okay, so this limit statement has to be correct. Okay, what about the uh, limit at infinity? Here, as you can see, you have a horizontal asymptote, right? This graph is getting closer and closer to this one. So that means that means limit as x goes to infinity, h of x is equal to, this is what we call the limit at infinity. What happens to this uh, function h of x as x goes to infinity? As x goes to infinity, your y value, your f of x value is getting closer and closer to this number three. So this is equal to three. Okay. All right. So we found the limits uh, at those uh, points, special points. Let's look at another example. This time, determine the limit at zero of the function given below. So we are given a piecewise function this time. Okay. To uh, determine the limit at zero, limit at zero means you need to find the limit when x is equal to zero. Okay. To determine that, the first thing that you can do is you can graph this one. You know how to graph uh, piecewise functions using pre-calculus. Of course, if you graph this function, you will get a graph like this. You get a piece like this. The function value at x is equal to zero would be this one. And here you have a hole, not really a hole. This is just an open circle. And the other piece will be like this, okay? Now, using the graph, you can easily calculate the limits. What is the left limit and the right limit? Let's try to find it. Limit as x goes to zero from the left-hand side, f of, is that f of x or some other function? Let's go back and check, h. Oh no, this is a new, pardon me. This is f of x. All right, limit as x approaches to zero from the left-hand side, f of x. What is that limit? As x approaches to zero from the left-hand side means your x values are approaching from the left-hand side like this. What happens to your y value? Your y value is approaching to this particular value, right? Which is minus one. So the left limit is minus one. What about the right limit? Limit x approaches to zero from the right-hand side, f of x is equal to, what happens to uh, your f of x value as x approaches to zero from the right-hand side? Your y value is approaching to this particular value this time, right? Which is one plus one. As you can see now, the left limit and the right limit are not equal. They both exist, but they are not equal. So what is the conclusion? The two-sided limit does not exist. Does not exist, okay? Two-sided limit means this limit, limit, as x goes to zero, f of x. Two-sided limit means you take without the sign here, okay? You don't mention the sign, two-sided. Okay, so in this case, this is an example where two-sided limit does not exist, but the le left limit and the right limit, uh, they exist individually. All right, here is uh, the last example I want to go over. Use a table of values and various graphing windows on a calculator or other graphing utility to investigate the limit of the function uh, f of x, f of x is given to be sine one over x as x approaches to zero, okay? Again, we use the same idea. We need to find the limit of this function as x approaches, excuse me, x approaches to zero. So I take some values, x values, which are approaching to zero from the left-hand side. From the left-hand side means they have they have to be negative, right? That's why I'm taking these negative values, which I approach it to zero. And I take a bunch of uh, uh, x values, which I approach into zero from the right-hand side as well. And I explore my function value, sine of one of x. This is, I, I can compute uh, the, the corresponding y value by plugging this x value in my function, sine one of x. And I can compute that corresponding y value using the calculator. So these are the y values I get. As you can see, as x approaches to zero from the left-hand side, this 
value is 0 point, negative 0 0.932. And the other value as x approaches to zero from the right hand side, this value is positive 0 0.932. Looks like they are not going to be close to each other. Okay. Remember in the previous example that we did, previous table example, your y value was approaching the same value from both sides. Here, when you look at these numbers, look like the, those numbers are approaching to two. In this side also, those numbers are approaching to the same value two. But in this case, there's a huge gap between these two numbers and look, they are not approaching the same value from both sides. Okay, that's what this table suggests us. This is not a proof. This is a uh, purely observation-based conclusion. Okay, so that means the limit, two-sided limit in this case does not exist. Limit as x goes to zero, your f of x, f of x is nothing but sine one over x, does not exist. And here is the picture. If you graph this uh, using a gra uh, graph in utility, you will see this kind of a uh, wavy shaped graph, but this wavy shape is happening very rapidly near zero, okay? So that you, can, uh, you cannot conclude where it will be going when X goes to zero from the left-hand side or the right-hand side, okay? Here is uh, the graph in a uh, small window. So from this, it's clear that the limit does not exist. All right, with that, we uh, conclude section 1.1. Here are the exercises assigned for the section 1.1. Make sure that you work uh, on all these uh, uh, problems. All right, I'll stop there. Uh, I'll see you next time.